Hi, it's Rob from the Brush and Bulk Gun. Today I'm going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to paint leather. So first up, we're going to paint the whole of the leather using Citadel Mournfang Brown. Sometimes this can be a little bit streaky, so if it is, just give it another coat or touch up the areas where it's streaked a little bit. Once you've got the nice Mournfang Brown smooth all over the leather cloak, then we can move on to the next colour. So we need to darken it down in part, so what we're going to use is a little bit of Citadel Nuln Oil. Now you can give this a reasonable coating of it, where you've got the recesses you want it to have slightly more on. So let that kind of pool a little bit, not too much. Just want slightly more in those darker recesses in the kind of concave areas of the leather. So down the bottom there you can see where it's pulled a little bit. Pulling like that's not too bad because it will show up underneath but it won't cause that huge kind of like pool of shade at the bottom of the coat. So with that done, now I'm just going to give it one more coat of null oil, and this is to kind of darken up the bits that are already slightly dark. You don't need to worry about getting loads and loads on this, but you can paint the whole thing all over. And again, just leave a little bit more to pool in the areas where it pooled earlier on. So once the null oil is dry, you then want to go over the whole thing with a layer of Citadel Gore Grunt of Fur. You can use this or Snake Bite Leather, the other contrast. They're both pretty good for doing the same kind of thing. Give slightly different effects, but I've used Snake Bite Leather and the Gore Grunt of Fur to do leather. One of the things this does is kind of brings out the deep brown so you get that kind of chestnutty look to it and it also drives with a slight sheen which is also something you do tend to get with leather as well so now that that's dry we're going to use a little bit of citadel dryad bark i'm going to start doing some nicks and scratches and details on the leather so we're going to do some highlights underneath each of the buttonholes here I'm going to start working on doing the scrapes on the edge of the leather. Now you can start by doing it like a vertical line down the leather, but then you want to do rough edges so you kind of go in diagonally or the opposite way to the line that you're following. So here, the bottom of the coat is going to be horizontal, so you're going to be doing those lines with a downward stroke, and that gives them the rough look as though the leather has been scraped. I can use the same technique when you're doing pouches and holsters and things like that. And also leather straps on different miniatures too. So we'll just speed through this while we do a little bit more. Okay, what you also want to do is go along any things that look like the kind of defined creases. So where this has been creased along here, Whenever he wears it, it's probably going to be creased in a very similar place because it's hanging off the armour there. He's got his belt underneath. So you're probably going to get a bit of wear and tear on those creases. And again, just adding more of these rough scuffs along these edges. So we're just going to work around this a little bit, speed this up in the next section, just get to the next little bit of detail and work. Now whereas I'm using dried bark here, you can also go back to using Mournfang Brown and follow exactly the same technique and this will just give you a slightly different kind of shade of leather on the scuffs. If you've got a piece of leather and you have scraped it, you know that quite often the colour of the leather underneath 
the outer colour is a bit different. It tends to have it a lot lighter. So this is the effect I'm going for here. The dryad bark is kind of a very dull dark brown, but when you lighten it, it does have that kind of light leathery scrape kind of thing that you will get. Again, you've got the creases under here, which would be the same whenever he's wearing this cloak or coat, whatever you call it. And the same on the helm too. Like so. So now what we're going to do is going to mix a little bit of Citadel of Rackarth flesh with the dryad bark. We're just going to start adding a lighter shade to all these scuffs. So once again you're going to be doing this in the opposite direction to how the edge is going. So here the edge was going vertically so we were doing the lines horizontally and here the bottom of the cape thing is going horizontal. So we're doing those lines vertical or at a slight angle. It's basically whichever way you want to do it, just so you get that rough edge to it. You don't want the highlights to be straight lines because the scuffs wouldn't tend to be in straight lines if it's sort of like the bottom of the cape or areas that are going to be rubbing quite often. As I say, there's many different ways you can do the leather. You can vary the shades of brown that you're using as your base coat. You can vary the contrast paints that you wanted to use or the shades that you were using on it. So if you were maybe doing like a lighter coloured leather like Bane Blade Brown, you could use that. Maybe shade it with a null oil only once and then use one of the contrasts like Gore Grunter or Snakebite Leather. You can actually just use Bane Blade Brown on its own and then put snake bite leather over the top of it. I sometimes do this for straps on different miniatures, like the Blue and Grunder miniatures. If you watch one of those videos, you'll see the leather straps on those are just Bane Blade Brown and then snake bite leather. And that gives a really, really nice effect for the leather too. So there is a huge number of different things you can do, different colored leathers. So different colored paints all work fine. It's always worth having a play about with them as well. If you're looking for a particular kind of thing, just have a mess about with the colours, the different types of browns. You can get the different shades. If you've got the contrast, try different contrasts on them. Because it really does give some excellent effects using a mixture of all of them. That's how he's looking so far. Now I'm going to add a tiny little bit more Citadel Rackarth flesh to the mix. I'm just going to do some really tiny scuffs on the edges here. Nothing too big, just a few little tiny bits where it's gone really deep into the leather and you've got that proper deep scuff. I'm doing a little bit around these buttonholes here because if you've got buttonholes and the buttonholes like skulls, it's anything like the belt buckle I used to have, it'll tear your clothing to shreds. If 
try not to put a big splodge of paint on like I just did there. I'm going to try and keep this last layer of highlights really, really thin. There's not too much there. I'm just going to speed up a bit and skip past these bits. Doing exactly the same as we were earlier. Doing the vertical strokes on the horizontal and the horizontal strokes on the vertical to get that rough edge on the leather. And here we're just touching up those scuffs and scrapes on the back of the leather too. Like so. Then you want to be doing slight little scuffs on these parts too as well, just to make them stand out. With that done, you can call it a day. So as I say, that's just one of the many methods you can use for painting leather. If you want to see any more different styles or different types of leather and things like that, just give us a shout up in the comments because I can get one of them done quite easily. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you have, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future content. Also, think about subscribing to some of our other social media linked below. Thanks very much. If you like the channel and you enjoy the content and you'd like to support us, please head to our coffee page below where you can buy us a brew. Thanks very much.